Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar at DSpace. I will let everyone know that we are open again, but only our peer lab is open. We still do not have any classes that are going to be in person. They will be online through the end of June and we will expect things for July. Now, my name is Ruth. I am a learning specialist at DSpace. And if you want to talk about periods of video games, you can always talk about that. Now for our project here, um, you'll notice that there's actually two video screens going on. Uh, so today we're making my microbits reaction timer, but um, this other screen that I have right over here, my hands over it right now, um, is morally for the project making part. If you do not have a microbit, you can still do this, like some parts of this webinar, like there's going to be a part where we'd be coding a bit. Um, there's like a little online simulator of a micro bit they can use with this. You just won't have the game board to play on, <laughs> but you can still like simulate some parts of it on the um, make code website that we'll be using. So I'm first going to show you guys what the finished product is. So bringing this little YouTube page over. This is what it is. So it's like a little timer where you have to like race against another person to get it first and it shows what side wins. Nope, with points. Let me replay that. You have a lot of you have to touch a little piece of foil for ground, but you got a start button and then two buttons for two different sides for play. There you go. Um, so yeah, I do kind of need a micro bit, but don't worry. There's make code right here. I'm just going to copy this, paste this right into chat. There you go. And if I click new project here, ah. great. I'm just showing you. Um, we're starting the making the physical part first, but right here we see that there's this little uh simulator on the side right here and if I click play on the left side it simulates my code and I can also code in JavaScript <laughs> or um, in blocks depending on what I want to choose with. So I'm going to go ahead and stop share here and talk about more on the making side over here. So first things first is that you need a micro bit. They're actually really really cheap to get. They used to be like Forty dollars, or maybe sixty dollars before that, and now they're like nineteen, twenty dollars. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. That's like the same price as a Raspberry Pi. Um, not as cheap as Arduino, but almost as cheap. Like about the same price as Raspberry Pi. Just open it here. Hopefully, the crunching sounds are not too much of the mic. So here's a micro bit on my project view. I can line my hand right. There we go. So um, it has like two buttons, a bunch of LED, some pins, and then on the back side here, it has Bluetooth, Excelon reader, um, a little reset button, things to plug into. So like it's very much uh, much simpler version of an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. If you don't know what those are, I definitely recommend looking those up, but it's very much into the maker world. I put that down. So another thing we need here is cardboard. You know, just be a board, it doesn't have to be cardboard, it could be like paper or something. Um, some alligator clips, I have exactly four of these. And some foil, I have some tape just to make things easier, you don't have to have tape. So scissors to cut down the board and a marker right here. So I'm gonna share my screen again. I'm gonna go to the next page. So. First, we have to decorate our board, um, like so, right here. And there's the little parts that I have listed as pin zero, pin one, and pin two. Notice on the biker bit, it has zero, one, two, and then ground, ground for the middle. So we're gonna be coding, um, make code to access these pins right here to do different things. Ground is always needed, so we're gonna have it connected like that. Um, with the alligator clips with foil too because we need a connective current that goes through between the fo yourself, the foil, and then into the pins, um, into the micro bit. So know what it does. So I'm going to again stop share. If you have any questions, let me know. You'll definitely be able to do the coding part 
um, online. But first, I have a little, I'm going to turn off my camera here. So it's just focus on the pin this video here. So we're just focusing on this right here. So if you're just coming in, don't worry, I'm going to be getting back to the code part. I'm just showing the project view of the making the board itself. There is a little bit we'll be going to encoding. Okay, so first things first, I need a little spot for my micro bit. Hopefully everyone can still hear me. And then you spot for start. No, I can redecorate the board any way I want. I'm just gonna keep it this way for now. There's this little part for ground. And that's just part of currents um, where we need to like keep grounded, be able to have a current go from high voltage to low voltage. There's a little bit more you can learn about currents online, but we do need a part for ground to connect to. This would be player two's button. And then I'll make a little bit right here. Yep, maybe a little bit bigger for player one. Okay. Now we need some foil. I hope that's, again, not too much for the mic. I'm just gonna cut some bits off. So I need one, two, three, four pieces of foil. Probably just gonna rip it. There you go. And when I use the foil, I need to make sure it wraps around the cardboard a little bit because I'm gonna be connecting the pins like on the edge of the cardboard. And then I'm just gonna rip that part off. Maybe I won't use tape. It's just there to hold things down. Oh, yep, it's coming off. So here we go, back on, just kinda folding over a little bit. And so this is start. Um, generally with cords, they don't mean much except for the colors they are assigned. Red is usually connected to power, black is connected to ground and other colors for different signals. So start is technically my power. So I'm just gonna connect that directly right on here. And on the back side, I was talking about how we need to make sure the foil folds over. So I'm gonna go back on this side over, fold it a little bit more, because the cardboard doesn't carry a current very well. So I wanna keep this directly, like the pins contacted to the foil on here. Here, then that one down, and then I'm gonna make a piece for ground. Uh, probably gray, that's more close to black. There you go, put it right here, fold it over a little bit. I don't need that much over. Take a little of my pen. Oh, we can't see anything but the D Space logo. If you click through the cameras, there should be more than one showing. Let me see. There's like a thing called gallery view and then speaker view. You should be able to see another camera. Or maybe it's because I pinned, I pinned this video over here. I wonder when I pinned it and messes it and the link goes do space. So I just unpinned the project view can't see it now. Okay, good. Yeah, I guess pinning just did it wrong then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so 
I'm just doing the maker stage of this project. We're going to be doing the coding next. And if you don't have a micro bit, you actually will be able to follow us along with a simulated micro bit. I'm just showing the physical version too with you because this is a um, recorded webinar and you'll be able to come back to this. This will be on our YouTube page in about this week. Okay, so I'm doing ground right here. And I'm connecting over the pins where it's like making contact, make sure there's no cardboard on the backside. This one just came off. It's gonna happen a little bit. That's why I was like, maybe I should use tape. There's my start button right there. I'll grab another piece of foil. Put it over player one's button. And I'm just gonna use this giant piece of foil for the last part. And I want to make sure my foils aren't touching each other. Yeah, I really should have just taped them. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to reconnect this one right here. I'll grab this green one. Connect it to player one. Pick this yellow one. It's tangled. <laughs> oh, I hit my camera by accident. <laughs> Just gonna move all this other stuff to the side here. There we go. I'm gonna take this one, connect it right into player two. There we go. Now I would connect these pins to the micro bit right now, but I kind of need to connect the micro bit itself to code onto it. So the micro bit box actually comes with a little cord that connects the computer. And it's also a battery pack for to, for when you're not connected to computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the views here. I'm gonna share my screen again, and I'll give you the link to the coding section. So this is a little part I was talking about if you just came in um, where we're making our board where we got our micro bit connecting different pins. So I'm just gonna go back a little bit here to get that code. I mean the IDE for the code. Just gonna copy that, paste it right into chat. I'm gonna stop share for a little bit because my chat was lagging out. There you go, and then resharing. Now it's showing. Okay, so we could just go ahead and start a new project. If you go down, we have like multiple projects from Microbit's website itself that you can do. Uh, you don't even have to have a Microbit unless you want to do some physical things like the reaction board <laughs> where um, we were connecting uh, foil and stuff, but you can still do parts of it. Like, oh, here we go. We got a name patch with some physical parts into it. Um, you can do really cool projects. There's people who made like a machine that pours milk <laughs> or like opens the mouth and closes it, milk carton box, inchworm. There's lots of cool stuff. And yeah, their website's free. So you don't have to worry about, you know, paying things for the physical chip and the program itself. So I'm going to go ahead and click new project. And well, earlier you guys told me, but not everyone. Um, name it timer cell reaction. If I can spell it right. Reaction timer. Create. There we go. So this is the Blockly view. You can also code in JavaScript. And you actually can switch back and forth, like code part blockly, then switch the JavaScript, code some more, switch back to blocks. It's up to you. I'm going to stick to blocks um, for those who've never like tried coding JavaScript before, just make these things easier. And the left seat here is our simulator right here. So under basics, you don't have to do this part yet. I'm just showing. So I'm bringing this little thing in right here, make a little smiley face. And then the left side right here, you'll see it simulating my LEDs right here. So we're focusing mainly on these pins right here. You notice as I highlight them, 
right here. That means they're interactable. So we're going to be coding things to access pen 0, 1, 2, and ground. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. So to use this, um, we got our simulator here. We got our work area on the right, right here. And then if we need more blocks, you can actually click through these different categories. The categories we math input, like if I press the A button right over here to do something, I can do it. Basics is stuff like strong numbers, LEDs, pausing something for a few seconds, various things like that. So first thing we need to do here is that we need to create some variables. So right here, variables. I'm gonna click on that. Click on make variable. There you go. And when we think about our project, we are need to think through all the stages through it. So we need a variable for starting it, a variable for ending our game, a variable for when it's running, and a variable if like someone starts it too early, like trying to cheat. So I'm gonna name one. Let me clear everything. There we go. Start. And then I'm gonna make a variable called end. Oh, wow, it's in there. End. Start, end. I'm gonna make another variable, call it running for when the game's running. I have this variable to keep track of who's winning. Here we go. Make a variable. And this one's gonna be called false start and it's searching the background for some strange reason. False start for when someone, you know, starts it too early or tries to cheat. There you go. So we got all these variables right here. So the next thing we need to do is grab four of these. Actually, wait, no, wrong. Grab, uh, no, yes, four of these. So we grab four of these here. So one, back to variable. Two, back to variable. Three, back to variable. Four. So now we got four of these. Right now they're grayed out because they're not connecting anything. They will not start to do anything at all. So we have to grab these and connect them. So blocks and block like coding, made by Google, um, is like a puzzle piece. They put together things. They have certain functions shaped certain ways so you don't accidentally put things that and other things that are not supposed to be there. Like a number might not be needed in a thing displaying text. So I've just set all these here. And you'll notice that there's these drop down menus in here. So instead of grabbing one specifically for every variable, I'm just gonna click through these and set them all. So I'm gonna do start, end, running, full start. There we go. So only start and end needs to be a blank number. There's this thing called Booleans in programming where it's basically setting things to true or false. For an example, if um, X equals one, that, um, that could be a true statement. Right there is our true statement. And if X equals two, then we have our statement that says, is X one be false? So if a statement saying is X is one, if X is one, we set it to true. And if X is not one, it's set to false. That is usually, um, booleans are usually in place to make sure things uh, start or stop only once. It's usually just checks. Like in video games, there's a variable called on ground for platforming. If the character, like a lot of games, you can have your character fly all the way in the air by holding space down down. So a lot of programmers create that boolean on ground where it's set to true when you're on ground lets you jump. And when you're in the air, it's set to false, so you don't keep like going up <laughs> if you want to know extra stuff there. So, so we need to grab a false statement. I believe it's under logic. Yep. So you go under logic, where it's got like these two arrows pointing different ways. Right. I try to like draw on the screen so everyone knows where to go. Right over here. And we need to grab false or true. You can just set the false when you go on the screen. So here's false one. We need it to for running. 
because we're using running to say, is the game running true? Then it does these things. If not, it's going to go let you press the start button and then false start for if anyone tries to cheat. So if someone's cheat, um, it restarts the game over. It sets it, like if it stays at false, it goes to the game. If there is a false start, it sets it true and restarts everything. There we go. So that is our start. And I'm going to show you guys JavaScript side here. There we go. So get let start equal start. Let n equal uh, uh, zero, start equal zero. Let run equal false. Let false start equal false. Right there. This little thing forever. You don't need it. You want to delete something and you left click it and drag it over to the trash can. The trash can only shows up if you bring a block and hover it over in the little search library. There we go. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'm very much willing to pause and wait. Okay. So we have to create some more variables for the different pins. Um, so I showed before where you have different pins that connect right here. And that's what we're setting these to connect to our buttons over here. So we need some code to get to those pins. Oh, come on, exit. Yep, went to ahead. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we need something for if on something is pressed or something is not pressed. I believe it's under advance. Yep, so if you click on advance, you get your pin functions right here in advance. I click on that. And then clear. I got out of pens. There we are. And that is not the pens I was looking for. I might have to create my own variable here. Yeah, oh, there it is. It's on the input for some strange reason instead of under pens. I guess these pens are more for analog writing into servos and such. So I'm going to go back into input. I bet it's under um, input right up here. <laughs> so I'm going to grab on pen right here. I'm going to grab one, two. So technically we need, yeah, just two because those are the two we're pressing right now. So we got on um, zero pressed. Then that's for it to start. And then I'm going to drag another one in. And it's going to gray. Oh, it's not graying one out. Usually it does. If I grab like multiple buttons out, usually grays one of them. Huh. Oh, there it goes. Now it does. Yeah. So the reason why I'm telling, trying to point that out is because I'm going to illustrate the point that you can't have multiple functions or blocks access the same thing. You have to make sure they're all different. So I get zero. One, so I'm just gonna click on this drop down menu on the grayed out one, click on P1. So on pin zero, pressed, it's gonna access this one right here. Let me draw a circle around it. On P1, it accesses the next one right here, which are, was what we were connecting our alligator, clip, alligator clips to. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that. So we're gonna only focus on pin zero right now, right into here. So we're gonna have how our button game works if I, no, I close the YouTube page, is that we're gonna have a countdown. So it goes three, two, one, go. And then we have to wait for like a little flicker to show up on the screen, like a block to show on the screen. And that one is telling people, you wanna press the button as fast as it can and it text which side pressed it first. So I'm gonna go to basics. It's the first one. I'm gonna grab three of these for like a countdown. Here we go. And I'm bringing those to pin zero because that's our start button. Whenever we press start, then the game goes. So this one's gonna be three, two, one. Okay. So in a lot of development for apps, applications, robots and such, we need to test. Um, I didn't have anything to test yet, but now I do. Some visual feedback. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on pin zero. Three, two, one. It's stuck there, so I need something to clear the screen. I'm gonna go to basics. And on our basics, I have a thing called clear screen. Dragging that in. 
Here we go. Refresh it. I'm going to press on pen zero. Three, two, one, clear screen. Good. If you wonder about those number that's coming through, that is the amount of data, the speed of data that's going through the pen. So if you wonder if something takes longer, you can use a simulator to see if it's slowing down or not. It's like it's packets being, if you ever played video games before, you might know what I'm talking about, but it's just the rate of how um, data transfers through. Okay. So next thing is we need to set our running start, our running to true because we have it set there. Well, false actually at the beginning again um, to make sure when the start is pressed, it doesn't start the game. So you can actually duplicate these. It's great. So I'm just going to right click on running, duplicate, yay. And then false start, right click, duplicate. Whew. I'm just going to grab these two, drag it in. And if you have any questions, you can ask. Here we go. Okay, so got setting these false again. Even though I have these over here to set the false, it's a little bit of repetition, but I'm just doing double checks to make sure things don't change. <laughs> just right there, just keeping it set. Yeah. So the next thing we got to do is that we could. So we have a little like dot that shows up on the screen after the countdown. But we don't want to show up right away every time, then people will just be ready for it every single time. We want to make it random. So we're just going to have a random space at the end between these numbers right here um, of like time. But after three, two, one, zero, it's going to like pause blank for a little bit at a random time and then display that like dot on the screen. So I'm going to look for under basics, this thing called pause. It's in basics. Click basics. There we go. It's going to lay down. There we go. Pause. Just going to drag it in. Then, And when I do that, it's not random. So I'm going to go ahead and test my simulation here, just with non-random so far. Click on the zero pin to get it to go. And I click it multiple times. This is why we have running false start to go. Just in case, also, if I press the button, start button multiple times, um, it doesn't reset, like, set the game, multiple games going off at the same time with different points. We don't want that. So right now, I don't really have anything. Oh, wow, I clicked it multiple times. You saw it there. Yeah. <laughs> How it just set off. Like, if I press this, like, several times, it, this goes off several times. So that's why we got our false start in there, too. So now I need it to be a, a random uh number in here and also i can't really test the pause yet until i have something afterwards comes up so uh let's go ahead and find random i think it's usually in the math yes so we go to math right here you pick random there we go drag it in and you notice that this is an oval shape this is oval too so you can fit that right into here but you can't fit this into a function. Yeah. So this is in many seconds. So 1,000 is one second. So I'm going to pick a random between 0 and 2,000 right there. And again, I can't really do anything yet. But I could add a little bit more to this, where I'm going to add some math right here where I could have it where it waits one second first and then pick a random interval between time or I can have literally have it where it shows up right away. But I don't want this to be zero at the beginning in that case. I want to give at least 100 milliseconds so it doesn't like pop up in the middle of a clear or on the lines. Like, I mean, it's okay to do that, but I don't want it to be like super suddenly. So I'm gonna make it like this where it waits one second before it has a random time. <laughs> I can also make it like five seconds. Make people really nervous. There you go. So next thing we need to do is that we need after time sets up in a ranked amount of time, we need it to put a little dot on the screen 
that dot says you gotta touch one of the buttons right away. And it sets a time for like whoever first gets it um, the point. So this is gonna be a set of code here. We still are not gonna do anything for pin one to pin two yet. We're still doing our base game setup. So we need it to um, check if a false start um, is not true. Uh, if it is true, you want the game reset. If it's on, we'll see soon. If it is not true, it will go through. But if it's true, we want to reset it. Not true, we go through so we don't get like multiple things going up at once by accident. Um, we want our set our running to true, saying it is going on. So first thing we want to do here, actually before this, we're going to just going to put the dot on the screen. So right in here, there's images. It's under advanced right over here. We're going to put the dot on the screen first and then to desk because I actually was thinking like, wait a minute, I want you guys to see what happens without setting those things to true yet. Um, but right in the images right here, click on that. And in here, there's this little, oh wow, it's not there. No, they moved things again. Or it just can just don't remember where it is. Oh, is this one of those things where it's under game instead? Nope. I'm looking for something that plots a LED based on the grid. That's on an LED. Duh. <laughs> Duh. There we go. Um, okay. So this thing, a LED, if you notice this little grid right here, this plot XY thing plots an like an LED on the grid. They hover on the most upper left one. It says zero, zero. My highlights might not show up in Zoom. I have a highlight for you if you have, like hover over it. But it's zero zero for me. And you notice that this starts at zero, not one. So this is the zero zero of the plot. So to left to right is X. From top to bottom is Y. You may be thinking in math where X and Y zero zero points in the lower left, like over here. <laughs> But in this, it's actually from the top, so it's, that's the zero, zero point right there, instead of from over at bottom here in American math. Um, it's not so much everywhere, but um, in video games and Arduino and such, it actually starts on the upper left. I guess you guys didn't know. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's weird there. It takes a little bit of getting used to. But if I go down one, it's zero one, so this will light up, and you notice for plot x plot y. So I have zero x one y. This LED will light up, so it goes from zero to four, even those five LEDs, because arrays start at zero. If you'll learn more about them program. Just letting you know if you want to learn. It's because arrays start at zero. Um, a lot of programming's actually not just arrays, but programming starts at zero for counting a lot of the times instead of at one. It's a little extra thing in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab plot x and y. Bring it right here. And I could have it just pick a random number, but I'm going to show you what happens if they just put one. One. You can also have a little slider for a number. I'm going to click on this pen right here. Three, two, one, go. And there's the LED. Yeah, and then there's that little test for how long it takes for it to show up right there. Now, I want this to be kind of random too. I don't have to have that, but I could have a random where it just shows anywhere on the screen. I'm going to have, hmm. So under LED, there should be random. Nope, there isn't. Looks like we're grabbing pick random back from math. Here all. I'm going to grab, where are you random? Pick random. Right there. Right click, duplicate, because I'm going to have it twice for the X and the Y. There we go. And as we remember, it goes from zero to four. So there is no 10. Four. So zero to four on the X, zero to four on the Y. And I'm gonna test it again. Three, two, one, random time interval. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. Yep, there we go. Now I wanna show you what happens when I click this button multiple times. Okay, there we go. It's kind of skipping over um, the LED. So our set false start isn't effective yet because we still need to add some things into it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Play again just to clear it all. So we need an if statement for checking if things are true or false on running. 
in false start. So if you want an if statement, you can go to logic right over here. Here is logic right here. And then I'm going to grab this if statement right here, drag it in. And I'm going to put all this stuff from below. Uh, actually, I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to bring this up. No, no, just keep that there. We're good. And I'll grab this here because I want to only check the true statement when to display the little dot on the screen there. So we need to change this little true right here. We just need to set it to a not in here for when not false start um, is true is when it goes because if it is true, our game's kind of messed up and we need to reset it. So I'm going to go to my variables. I'm just going to grab a regular false start. Going to my logic, I'm looking for my not. There's not. Grab it in. You notice that this is a diamond shape in here. First, let me put it in here so you can see it better. You notice that this is a diamond shape in here. False start's not diamond shape, but it still fits. This is one of those things I'm like, I can't, I just can't explain why. I just don't know <laughs> why it lets me put a, oops, oval right in there. Just for some strange reason. Even though, like, they're locally supposed to have it where only certain shapes can fit in certain places. But, yeah. That's, so if false start by default is false. So if, oh, where's my knot? I lost my knot. <laughs> Let me control Z in here. There it is. There we go. So if false start is not false start is true, then, so it's basically true there. Then it goes through this. And we're going to go ahead and set a running time for our start variable. So I'm going to go ahead and go to set start, right click, duplicate, drag this over here. Hopefully, I can make my screen bigger for you guys. There we go. It's not going to be testing a little bit. So, first, I need to set my start to a um, running time to go. I'm going to mute myself real quick. This Here we go. Okay. So I need to get running time. So in this case, this one, I'm like, oh, where is it? <laughs> I'm going to go straight up and switch to JavaScript. <laughs> so right at the top, right in here, there's this thing that says JavaScript. I'm going to click on that. Here we go. And look for my if statement. There's my if right here. There's start right here. And I'm going to change it to input running time. Oh, I wonder if it is under input. Also, uh, when you go to JavaScript mode, it shows you what each thing does and how you can like type it out <laughs> for shows. And let me go back to blocks here. Um, Cause I wonder if it running was in, it's not in there. So I'll have to code it. So yeah, going back to the if statement right here, if explanation point stands for not, if not false start, start equals, input so it's based on when we press on the little like foil right here that's when our start is set i'm gonna do running time right here start equals input running time so it sets the um, overall running time of the game so it functions that's what our running variable is for well my run is actually ruling. It's a separate thing. <laughs> That's actually separate there. There we go. And I'm setting the running to true. I don't have to do that in JavaScript. I'm just kind of skipping to it. Now I'm going to go back to blocks. There we go. And it's not broken. And there it is. Running time. Middle, many seconds. And our running set to true after setting the time for it. Next thing we need to do here is we need to stop the animation that happens before um, 
So, you know, when we press the button multiple times and it has like three, two, one, three, two, and over and over again, the way to stop that is literally just find this function called stop animation. And if it's under images, no, nope. I'm just going to search for it. Stop animation. There it is. Stop animation. Drag that in. And that happens right after um, we set if or full start is equal to true or not false, <laughs> it stops animation. Um, so you don't have to worry about it setting off over and over again. So now stop animation. I'm just going to grab clear screen again. The reason why I'm doing that is just to be safe. <laughs> stop animation so it stops at like in middle two or something. It clears it and it goes in the middle of the number here. There we go. Now we got our pen zero to work. So I'm going to go ahead and start my simulation again. I'm going to press zero. Go. Three, two, one. Beep. And there's my dot. Now I'm going to refresh it and I'm going to press this several times. Oh, no, oh, it's not working. Hmm, I need to fix something here. I'm going to come back to that to fix it. There's something in here that I did not set right. Oh, why is that showing at the bottom instead of the front? Okay, you it's supposed to be set that. See, on start right there. No, this is all supposed to be at the beginning right here. Right here. Um, yes. Control X. Enter. This is just a weird side fix I have going on. If I go, it fixes itself. Back to blocks. It looks exactly the same on blocks, but I did fix something there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to pin one now. Wherever my pin one went to. Did I delete it? Nope, it's all the way off the side here. So now we're programming our buttons here. So when someone presses pin one, we want the screen to change to that side, got it first. So I'm gonna go to basics, I'm gonna show LEDs, and you could do different designs, like one or two, type a one in there and a two for there, whoever got it first, but it's up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and now simulate it. Go, three, two, one, go. Dot shows the screen to click on it, then all these there. Now, of course, I can actually just click one at any time there. So we still got some other things that we need to type in. It's like, I can just click this right there and go straight to that. Then it continues the rest. Okay, so we need a few things here. Um, we need an if statement for saying, hey, if you did press it after the LED show up, do you, um, do you give them a point? If they press it too early or too late, give them an X. So we're gonna use our if statement for running. We're actually gonna go to logic right in here and do an if else, left click, drag it in. So showing LLFDs for if it's true, I'm gonna, oh, nope, right click, duplicate. And the else down here is when, you know, they got it wrong. I'm gonna switch that to, like if they clicked, like touched it way too early or something. And X on the left side for when the left side lost. There we go. And then I need to change this to a variable that says running. So running, if running. So if running sets to true, um, then we're gonna set to false. I'm gonna right duplicate this. Set the false here. 
I'm gonna duplicate end. Put over here. And I'm gonna grab that running input again. So if like it was touched. There we go. And then after that, we're gonna pause for a little bit. The reason why we're pausing is just to give the program some time to think through. So one second. And then I'm gonna to go to basics, show number, right below that. I'm gonna zoom out here so you can see everything. Or zoom in. There you go, show number. And then I want to take this show number is showing how much time that it took for the person to touch the foil from running time over here. So show number, I'm going to grab um, end minus start from the running time. So first I need to get some math in here. Minus. There we go. Grab a variable. End. Drag in here. Oh, nope. Didn't fit in right. Here we go. And then a variable again. Do start. Here we go. And then I want to set full start to be true when they touched it way too early for the cheaters. So I'm going to go to variables, or I could just duplicate. I'm just going to grab one right there. Set full start. Yeah, full start has multiple functions here. Um, set full start to true. I believe that's under logic. Yep, there it is. True. Drag it in. And get a diamond shape fit in the circle. Like, <laughs> there. Okay. So, I'm gonna zoom in on here. You got pin on pin one pressed. If the game's running, set it running to false after, you know, this was touched. This is exactly when it's touched. So it set it false saying, hey, it's done. Then I set n or time for n to the running time. So we get how long it took them to press the button. Then the side, they indicate side that one. Pause for a little bit before it shows the number. Else, if they press it too early, set full start to true. You know, to say, oh no, they hit it too early. And the little x would say, that, yeah, they hit it way too early. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this. So right here, starts, go, and yep, I pressed it too early, so we got the X there, so it's working. Now press the start right here. Now I'm going to wait for the LED to show up, a little dot. There it is, oh, and got a point in that side. And took 50 to 529 milliseconds for it to show up. <laughs> uh, to take, for me to take the press on it. Okay. There we go. So now all we need to do is do the same for pen two. You know how we're going to do pen two? We're just going to straight up duplicate pen one. <laughs> so let me zoom out here. There's like a lot of stuff. Put that there. Oh, nope, nope. There we go. Drag that over here. Pen zero right here. And one. Right click, duplicate right here. I'm going to zoom in. There it is, it's grayed out because it's pin one. I'm gonna switch it to pin zero. No, not pin zero, pin two, which is this one. There we go. And then I'm gonna switch this to the other side. Switch this to the other side. There we go. And test. Go. Here it is, that side got it, a refresh. Uh, go. And what's if, if I hit this one too early? It's over, done, that's exactly what we want. Here we go. And that's actually everything right there. I'm gonna go ahead and go to JavaScript, Control C, no, Control A, Control C. Uh, moved everything back to the bottom. Got all of this, Control X. Go to the top. Control V. Let the compiler fix itself. There you go, it's gone. Yeah, Control A, Control C. And pasting right in the chat the code. If you just want to copy and paste it into <laughs> make code in here. Okay.
So now I just need to download this to my micro bit. Here we go. And I have the awkward thing where I need to plug my mouse because I've used all three <laughs> USB ports. There we go. And to get the program onto Microbit, you literally just drag the file to the Microbit. So left click in here, it shows up like a flash drive right here. Left click, drag it on. Loading, there we go. And then I'm unplugging it. Put my mouse back in. My little battery pack here. See it right here. And then I'm going to stop share right here. And did my phone die? Yes. My phone did die. <laughs> so I'm going to do this a little differently here. So I'm just going to connect everything here on this screen. Um, I have my board right here. Just gonna put this right here. And you take pen right here to red that goes start to pen zero. It's not focusing. Come on, that's pen zero. Just trust me on that. Right there. And then layer one right here is pen one. So I just connected it from here. Then, oh, that's fun. <laughs> two, pin one. Then yellow, layer two, that's pin two. And right here, just connecting that to third pin. Well, it is third pin, but it's label number two. Here we go, got pin one, pin two. And then I need ground to make that complete connection. Taking that, adding it to ground at the end right here, holding it up, see? making sure this is all connected. Okay, so this is gonna be a little hard, making sure this is centered. Um, there we go, hopefully that'll hold it. So I'm gonna put my hand right on ground right here, and then I'm gonna press start. There we go, three, two, one. Wait for that dot shows up, press on that side, that shows up. Okay, and it goes one, two, five, eight, any seconds, it took me a little too long to press on it. I'm gonna start again. Three, two, one, go. I'm gonna try the other side here. Here it is. Shows the other side there. Okay. One, two, two, eight. Is that the same number from last time? Okay, I'm gonna start again. And I'm gonna press this one too early. X. Here we go. We got our thing done. So we just got a reaction time on made. You guys can like make competitions between each other, see who got theirs first or not. It's unfortunate that my phone died. I just realized like, huh, my camera, my extra camera is gone. <laughs> but hopefully that made sense on the screen. But um, that's actually it for our webinar. If you made anything super cool, you can go to dospace.org. Um, or actually go to Facebook and search Do Space and show off what you've made there. Um, you can also go to dospace.org itself. If you got any questions, you can ask chat there. Um, hey, I have a question on this. Or you can email us at hellodospace.org. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope you all have a good evening. Oh, and again, Do Space is open. Uh, you can go in and use the computer lab. Thank you and have a good evening.